we can get uh, right into this first game just to give you a little bit of a preview of what's to come. Uh, Spy Party is played at fancy cocktail parties uh, occurring at lots of different places. Uh, these various venues, uh, maps, levels, whatever you want to call them, all have their own special characteristics. You can see uh, they include a fancy library, an outdoor terrace, uh, the outdoors of a pub, a uh, fancy house with a pool, a cabin in the woods, a high-rise penthouse apartment, um, and all of these different venues present their own unique challenges. And Spy Party uh, allows for lots of different kinds of play styles depending on what venue you're playing on. Yeah, as you can see from the screen here, um, there is in the Winter Cup sort of a pick and ban system so that players can customize their venue pool for their match a little bit. We're not going to go into the weeds on that right now. Um, but suffice to say, both these players have picked the map pool that they want and then banned out the maps that they don't like. So what you're going to see, the ones that are lit up, are the ones that we'll see here in this match. Um, the match format is best of 12, so the first to seven wins. All right, well with that, I think we're ready to get into our very first game of Spy Party. Uh, and this is what the game looks like. We're looking here from the spy side. Thabsies is starting off playing as the spy. This is what you would see if you were playing as the sniper, all of these different guests here at the party. Of course, as spectators, we get to see this green arrow over the spy. That tells us who our spy character is. The sniper cannot see that. It would make it very easy to find the spy if they could. But let's take a look and see uh, what Thabsies does in order to win this spy game. Uh, Spid Monkey, you ready to get started? Absolutely. Ready when you are. All right. We'll get the first game going in three, two, one, playing it. So Thabs is here playing as a character that we call Plain Twin. Um, so characters don't really have official names right now in the game, but the community has come up with names that are really commonly used through many of them. Um, and we'll use them in the stream so you can sort of pick up the names when you hear them in other casts. But with that said, if and when you start playing, you're very much encouraged to come up with your own names that work for you and whomever your friends are that you play with. So don't feel like these are gospel or anything. So, so far, uh, Thabsies has been trying very hard to blend in with the party, just walking around, going from place to place. But now we've gone into a conversation standing right next to our seduction target. Our seduction target is this person here with the red arrow over their head. And we talked right next to them. Talking to your seduction target allows you to complete the seduce the target mission. Uh, you have to talk next to your seduction target several times. That fills up a little meter in the upper left. And once that meter is fully filled up, you've completed that mission. You can see Thabsies has come next to our seduction target and is talking again. That mission is now 68% complete. So one more talk next to our seduction target will probably allow us to complete that first of five missions that we'll need in order to win as the spy. That's definitely true, but if you look at the top right-hand corner of the screen, you see that the clock is ticking down. I had mentioned earlier that the spy has a limited time to complete these missions, and the clock is the reason why, because if the clock runs out before the spy is finished, and the sniper does not shoot, then the spy loses. So the spy has to be considering different ways of potentially winning the game and getting those missions done. So Thabsies here is almost trying to hide from the sniper. You can see here the sniper's laser view it's very difficult to see Thabsies hiding behind this pillar. Uh, this is a common trope in spy party venues. There are places where the spy is difficult to see. And so here, Thabsies is hiding behind this pillar, is waiting for something to happen. They want the sniper to kind of lose track of them for a while so they can do something sneaky. We'll have to wait to see what it is Thabsies has planned. Um, but for now, we're just going to hide behind this pillar out of view of the sniper who's busy tracking all the other guests at this party, seeing which ones are talking conversations or doing other things that could mean that they're actually the spy making progress on missions. That's definitely true. And if you look around the party, you'll notice that some of these characters are glowing a bright white and others are darkened. So that's highlighting and lowlighting. That's one of the mechanics that the sniper has available to them to sort of keep track of the party and help out their own memory. Because this game is very memory taxing for the sniper. So by loading characters that you think aren't suspicious or highlighting characters that you think are, it's a really handy way for the sniper to sort of track things down and ease up the memory load a little bit. So Thabsies has really just been hiding here for quite some time. We've been behind the pillar for over a minute now. 
And while we're hiding here, we're not making progress on missions. So you can see Thabsy's looking all around, trying to figure out what their next move will be. But for now, we're content to just sit here and wait. And the clock is ticking down. It may become very difficult for Thabsy's to complete all their missions, but if Thabsy's is able to do something to convince the sniper that someone else is the spy and get someone else shot, Thabsy's can still win. Yep, and that's something that we call framing. Um, literally just picking another character in the party who is suspicious and getting them shot and literally framing them for being the spy. And now if we look over at the sniper view, you can see the sniper's paying very close attention to this waiter. The waiter's name is Toby. Uh, Toby is carrying around a tray with a list on it. If anyone ever takes that list, that could be the spy completing the mission, purloin the guest list, and that's why the laser is keeping it in such close view. Uh, we're also looking at these statues over here because an AI, excuse me, a spy might swap one of those statues for another one completing a different mission. So lots for the sniper to keep track of, even when Thabsy's the spy is just chilling behind this pillar. And it's worth noting as well that library is definitely one of the biggest venues in the game currently. Um, Thabsy's has emerged from the pillar now, finally. And with 23 seconds left, that's a lot of missions to get through and not a lot of time. So let's see what Thabsy's does with that. One thing that the spy can do when time is running low is do something called adding time, which you check your watch at the window with a special action test, and that will do it right there. It looks like Thabsy's is setting up to do that right now. The top, when you do this, the time will go up in the right-hand corner, and the spy is has suddenly has more time to complete the missions that they desperately need in this case. So the spy now has 40 seconds left. We added some time. Um, but right now, Thabsies is going to go over to this statue and it's going to swap it. So whereas the statue right now is a Venus bust, it's going to switch to a bird. And you can see the sniper saw the statue change, zoomed in on the statue. So now the question is, if the sniper remembers that this wasn't always a bird, that means that another character could be framed for having caused that statue to swap. And you can see the sniper now low lighting people who couldn't have done it. Yeah. Thabsies went for another time ad there at the end, but unfortunately the time expired. And as I said before, if the time expires before the spy has finished um, getting their missions done, then the sniper will win by default. You'll notice that the clock on the top right uh, has two different times for the sniper and spy. Um, so we'll, we'll get into action tests a little bit later, but suffice to say that just although it says that the spy has a little bit of time left, there is a little bit of a bug in the game where the time doesn't quite add up between the two uh, cameras. Yeah, so in this case, Thabsies went all in on a frame strategy, uh, making sure the sniper didn't assign any suspicion to them. And then at the last second, swapping a statue to make it look like someone else caused the swap. Uh, it didn't work. The sniper didn't shoot anyone else. And as a result, Thabsies ran out of time and Lev the sniper won that game. Yep, so like I said, the set is best of set, best of 12, excuse me, first to seven wins. So Lev Trotsky has picked up the first, the first game here. And now the players will switch sides with Lev going onto the spy side and Fabzi's going behind the scope as the sniper. All right, Lev here is playing as the character we call Kane. We'll see what Lev has planned to complete their missions in three, two, one, playing it. And Lev here is going to start by walking over to the right side of the venue. You see our seduction target with the red arrow is also over here. And unfortunately, our seduction target goes somewhere to a very crowded part of the venue. It's hard for us to follow, so we can't go over there and flirt with her. We're stuck just standing here. And the problem with standing here is there's no way for us to complete a mission. Yep, that's definitely true. But it looks like we're going to go try and chase down the selection target instead. Now, getting flirt down is something that a lot of players will sort of prioritize because it's what we call a soft tell. Um, so there's a different soft tells in our community are missions that don't really leave a trace that's visible to the sniper, and that includes things like this mission right here, seduction or seduce the uh, seduction target, excuse me, and things like contact the double agent, which I'm sure that we'll see later on in this game. Whereas hard tells are things like swap which we just saw, where there's an actual visual tell that changes to tip off the sniper that something has happened, that the spy has done something. 
So Lev now has flirted with our seduction target once. We'll need to flirt one or two more times to complete the mission. And this person with the yellow arrow, the double agent, has joined our conversation. If we want, we can now say the word banana bread, which is a code phrase, to connect with the double agent and contact them. If we do that, the sniper will hear us say banana bread and will know that we were in a conversation when we said it. And the bonus of that for the sniper is that when it comes off, we finish our flirt first, but when the banana bread comes off, the sniper, because they know you can only do it while you're in a conversation circle, anybody who is not in conversation when it's othered, which banana is going bread. to happen right now, anyone such as small man there who's at the blue books, you know cannot possibly be the spy. I've actually paused the game here, and you can see there's quite a few people that are not in conversation right now. Anyone not in conversation, the sniper knows is not the spy, now let's see what the sniper does for all those people. All right, count us back in. So I'm at 2.56, and at 2.56, I'll count us back in in 3, 2, 1, playing it. And you can see all of these characters that were out of conversation have been low-lit by the sniper because they cannot have been the spy. So a lot of players, when they use highlights and lowlights, will focus on lowlighting people and then assuming that they can't be the spy and then not pay any more attention to them. Meanwhile, Lev just took a drink from Toby. Now, Toby, as you mentioned, has a mission, a guest list on his tray that a spy can purloin. And that is a hard tell because the list disappears and an attentive sniper can notice that list vanishing and know that the spy has gotten that mission done. Yep, but Lev in this case doesn't take the list. Uh, the sniper was paying too much attention to it. It would have been noticed if we took the list. So instead, we just take a drink from the waiter uh, and then wander off to the other side of the venue. If you look in the upper left, you can see we have two missions done. Contact the double agent, which we finished by saying banana bread with the double agent in our conversation. And seduce the target, which we finished by talking to our seduction target a couple times. We have a minute and 48 seconds left to try to finish three more missions because we need five to win. So one of these missions is transfer microfilm. And that's what Lev is doing right now. One of the, There are two ways of doing it. You can take a book directly from one colored bookshelf and dump it into a different colored bookshelf, and that completes the mission right away. And it looks like that's what Lev is planning to do. The other way is called an animation microfilm test, and where you can take something out of the book itself and put it into a book of a different color. But Lev is just going straight for the direct transfer right here. We call this a hard tell because an AI will never put a book back where it doesn't belong. They're very tidy and polite. Lev has taken a book out of the blue bookcase and just put it into the green bookcase. If the sniper knows that we got that book from the blue bookcase, the sniper knows we are the spy. But since we haven't been shot, we can probably assume the sniper doesn't know and we got away with that mission. Now we're at statues, we can inspect the statue we're holding by looking at it as well as the statues to our right and our left. We need to inspect three statues to complete a mission. And by standing here at statues for that long, we were able to do it. We've inspected three statues and we completed our fourth mission. We were also high lit because going to statues is something that almost all spies will do. And many snipers will highlight anyone who goes to statues to remember that they could have completed the inspect statue mission. And if you look at the top left, you can see four missions are done. They're highlighted in green there and checked off. Meanwhile, Lev is going to purloin the guest list, which he has done here, as Toby offered. And now he's going to walk away and try and get as far, far away from it as possible before an AI ends up taking the list. So there are action tests in the game. Um, and the mechanics of that can be a little bit difficult. Um, but if between the green shot test and the red test, something will happen. But meanwhile, it doesn't even matter because the character at statues gets shot in overtime. We should talk about overtime, though. Yeah, absolutely. So right here, when Lev purloins the guest list, it doesn't disappear right away. Instead, it's going to disappear the next time someone takes a drink. So remember we talked about the sniper paying lots of attention to the waiter? We have to know who is talking to the waiter, who could have potentially triggered the list to disappear. The waiter offers to us. The waiter offers to Orange Sorry. The waiter offers to... Uh, this Lola character, which we call Boots, and Boots finally takes the drink, and that makes the list disappear. And when the list disappears, 
that causes us to go into overtime. The sniper always has at least 10 seconds to shoot after the last mission is complete. Yep, absolutely. So when overtime hits, the sniper isn't aware of when the last mission happened. All they hear is that frantic beeping, and they know that a mission was completed and the spy is done, but they don't know who the spy is still, and they have to take their best guess and take a shot before the overtime beeps expire. And in this case, Fabsies thought that uh, the character we call Disney over here at the statues was the one who finished their missions, being at statues at the very end, and ended up taking the wrong shot, giving Lev the spy win. Yep, if the sniper shoots the wrong person, that's a victory for the spy. And that means Lev won two games on library. Uh, the first because Thabsies timed out as spy, and the next because Thabsies shot the wrong person. Okay, so we're going from one of the biggest venues in library into a smaller one. As we said at the beginning, every venue has its own unique characteristics, and part of that is the number of missions you have to complete in order to finish. So on library, you had to finish five of the eight available missions, whereas here on high rise, we're down to five missions available, and you only have to finish three of them. And the, and the spy can choose which missions they want to finish, or they want to have available to them, excuse me. So you can see in the top left that transfer microfilm, swap statue, and fingerprint ambassador are crossed out meaning they're not available, and the other ones are. So Thabsy is going to be looking to finish things in a much more narrow fashion here than Lev was able to do last time. All right, so Thabsy uh, will be playing as Pearls, named for her necklace, and has to complete three missions. We'll get into the game in three, two, one, playing it. So we're going to stand her AI control for a little while. Uh, when you start the game... Your character is controlled by the AI, will act all the same ways as the AI will act, and you can choose when to take control. So here Thabsies uh, allows the AI to sit us out at the window for a bit, and then takes control and walks into this conversation. Uh, the double agent is here, so if you remember, you can contact the double agent anytime they're in conversation with you. So Thabsies could choose at any time to say banana bread and contact the double agent, but that gives the sniper that information that anyone outside of conversation is not the spy. And meanwhile, you can see the seduction target again. That's Boots with the red arrow over her head. She's come to join us, and we can get our flirt off here. And we do. And it's worth noting as well that the sniper can't see the red arrow. The sniper does not know who the seduction target is. They can only sort of deduce it just by watching the pattern and the movement of the characters. So some good snipers are able to figure out who is flirting with whom. Um, but it's definitely an acquired skill and one that's difficult to, to pull off, absolutely. So Thabsies walks over to conversation with our seduction target again and is high lit. So the sniper, Lev, thinks that we're a little bit suspicious, maybe for chasing our seduction target, banana bread. and now says banana bread, which means that we'll see these low lights come off from Lev Trotsky, a couple of low lights. That contact was fake for us. The double agent was not in our conversation. You can still say banana bread, maybe to cast some suspicion on other people. But as you can see, there are two characters with a yellow arrow over their heads. One is the real double agent, and the spy knows who that is, but the spy does not know who the suspected double agent is, and the sniper does. And the suspected, as far as the sniper knows, either of them could be the real one. So even though we didn't have Kane in our conversation circle when the banana bread went off, we had General, so as far as the sniper knows, we actually got credit for that mission being completed. Thabsies still just standing here in conversation with our seduction target. We'll flirt with her again. Uh, we'll need one more flirt probably to finish off that mission. Uh, you can't flirt and then flirt right away. You have to play it a little bit cool, give the seduction target some time. Um, so instead we're going to walk away. We're offered a drink, but we just tell the waiter we're not interested. And we chase our seduction target again back into this conversation and we'll flirt with her probably for a third time. That's definitely true. And with Unruh in the left, we still have to find two more of these missions to complete at some point. You can see here, Purloin is one of the available missions. And as we've seen, it can be a very, very powerful, very, very powerful mission, excuse me, for sure. But we choose not to do it once again. And with time ticking down, we have the flirt done. But Thabsies has to be thinking really hard about what they want to do to finish here. We've been offered a drink, but again, we're not going to trigger the Purloin. We don't want to take the guest list. We think the sniper would see it and shoot us. We only have 25 seconds and we need to finish two more missions. One of them that we might be hoping for 
Okay, we've requested a drink, and now we're going to Purloin. Again, it hasn't been taken yet. The next person to take a drink from the tray will trigger it. You can see the sniper is watching the tray very carefully. Irish takes a drink, the list disappears, and Irish gets shot for it. Yeah, Irish was high lit, and she'd been doing a lot of stuff in that party. So Lev clearly thought that she was a lot more suspicious than Thabsies as the actual spy was. And because she took the list, which is one of those hard tells that the sniper is aware of, it seemed like Irish was a spy. And so Lev shot her incorrectly, giving Thabsies the spy win. All right, so Thabsies brings it back, was down 0-2, to two, now is only down 1-2. to two. We're going to play a second game of High Rise. Thabsies will be the sniper, and Lev will be playing on the spy side as Orange Sari. Three missions to do in three, two, one, playing it. And so Lev, playing a very slow character, just walks out to this conversation standing all by herself, uh, not doing anything suspicious to start the game. Yep, definitely true. As I said before, uh, the spy can pick which missions they want to have available to them on this variant of High Rise, and Lev has chosen the same ones as Thabzies did, which means that Purloin is on, um, and the other ones, Transfer, Swap, and Fingerprint, are off. We haven't gotten into Fingerprint really all that much yet, but that will come up later on, I'm quite sure, with these two players. So we've stood next to our seduction target, and we've talked once, so we've made some progress on Seduce the Target. 2 minutes 42 left to go. Lev Trotsky has a drink. Just going to sip it here in conversation. Our seduction target walks away. High Rise is a venue where you have plenty of time. You can see the time in the upper right. And so we're just going to be sitting here waiting for a good opportunity to do more missions. Yeah, it seems like Lev is sort of staring down the seduction target, really wanting to get that flirt mission complete. And let's see what happens when the seduction target lands. And they land right next to us, which allows us to flirt again right away, which we do. It's a white test for 64%. Remember that we have to get up to 100, and it can be difficult if you're not really, really close to the, to the uh, seduction target at times. The closer you are to the seduction target when you talk, the more progress you make, but the more the sniper might see you always standing next to the same person and think that might be you trying to seduce your target. Lev has a minute 50 left in this game. Zero missions complete. We could, of course, go inspect statues. Um, inspecting statues finishes a mission, but it can be very suspicious since it's such a good way for a spy to finish a mission. A lot of times it'll get you high lit. So a question from chat is, what is a white test? I had mentioned before that there are action tests in the game. Um, I mean, whenever the spy does a spy action, they do a sort of mini game, like a, a quick time event, where a little bar comes up and the spy has to try and land it right in the green part. And each of the different things, red, white, and green, have a different effect. Green ones generally are better. White ones are the normal ones, what you would normally see, especially without action tests on. And then red ones are bad. Red ones do bad things, um, which can be used intentionally sometimes. But generally, spies try to avoid those as much as possible. So we triggered Purloin the guest list while we were just standing out in the middle of the venue. And Toby has been going around offering the drink to people. It's been rejected by us, by Duke, by Queen buy pearls. Meanwhile, we say banana bread, we contact the double agent, and Toby still has not had anyone take the drink. But the safety just came off. That's the first thing the sniper has to do before shooting. The safety came off on us, and the shot comes off on the wrong person. Once again, the green purloin tricks the sniper into shooting the wrong person and giving the spy the win. It can be so difficult to figure out who caused a purloin to happen. If you look all the way back here, this is where we're offered a drink and we're going to use this opportunity to trigger the purloin with a green test, action test. And now we have to watch all the people that Toby offers to and the sniper has to memorize them. The sniper has to say, Orange Sorry rejects, Duke rejects. Now Queen is going to reject. After Queen rejects, Pearls is going to reject. And if the sniper isn't keeping track of every single person in that chain, when the list finally does disappear, they don't necessarily know who it was that triggered it. In this case, when they see the list disappear, they say, well, I remember Queen was in the chain. I see that the list has disappeared. I think it may have been Queen that caused it and takes the shot onto Queen. It's the wrong shot, and that means Lev as spy is the winner. Okay. 
So we're going from one of the smaller venues to another smaller one, which is Terrace here. Um, and one thing that you will clearly notice right now is that Toby, the waiter, with the guests in his pocket, is behind a bar this time around instead of walking around with a tray in his hands like he was on Library and High Rise. So that changes the purloin mission up some. Instead of purloining when Toby offers you a drink, you have to go up to the bar um, and either get a drink innocently, of course, or you can either take the list directly or you can delegate it, which is putting it in your pocket and then having someone else from the party going to take the list for you. And on Terrace especially, with still only needing three missions to finish, that can be a very, very powerful tool, either in finishing yourself or in framing and getting somebody else shot. But let's see what these players have to offer here on Terrace. All right, we'll get into our Terrace game. Thabseas is on the spy side. Thabseas is down one to three, so it has to make up some ground. In three, two, one, playing it. And Thabseas is just going to walk around the venue, land in a conversation not next to our seduction target, unfortunately. Uh, but I suspect we won't stay here that long because there's no way for us to make mission progress while we're standing here. That's true, but as on High Rise, the time is fairly forgiving here. You can see that there's still over three minutes remaining here, and with only three missions left to finish, it's not that hard to get things done in a pretty quick flurry. The double agent has come to join us, and Terrace is a bit unique because unlike every other, nearly every other venue, excuse me, there's no suspected double agent here. So when a banana bread goes off, the sniper knows who has a real banana bread and who does not. Thabzi's uh, continuing to be content to just sit in conversation. You see a little camera nod there from Thabzi's. Uh, sometimes players that are playing competitively will use little camera shakes or camera nods to tell us when they're happy about something. Uh, in this case, Thabsies may be looking at other people in the party and seeing that AIs are appear to be making progress on missions and thinking that might make them suspicious, that might make them get shot. But look here, we've been high lit. The sniper thinks banana that we're bread. suspicious. And we fire off a banana bread, and it's a fake one. As you can see, the double agent is in the other conversation circle, the one that we just left. And we intentionally go into the one without the real double agent in it, fire off the banana bread, and don't get credit for the mission completion. Thabzies is probably trying to frame somebody here. Frames can be very effective on Terrace, uh, but right now we're gonna make some more mission progress. Thabzies goes over to statues and we're going to inspect the statue we're holding and inspect the statue next to it. Uh, unlike on Library, where we got all three inspects with one statue visit, here on Terrace, there are no groups of three statues. You can see there's two statues here, and there's two statues over there. So we're going to need to go to that other set of statues at some point if we want to complete the Inspect Three Statues mission. And it's worth noting that every venue has different amounts of inspects needed to complete the mission. Some, like Courtyard, only require two. Some, like the three or five variant of Pub, only requires one. But as you said, here on Terrace, it does require three, which means two separate statue visits are necessary. Meanwhile, Thabzies is getting his first flirt here uh, with Iris, our seduction target. And we go for a bug there at the end, but it doesn't work as the ambassador leaves. I don't think we've seen, talked about bug yet here, have we? We haven't. So one of the missions in Spy Party is bug the ambassador. Um, flavor, pretty obvious. You plant a listening bug on the ambassador. Uh, to do this, your character has to reach out an arm and touch and the, the ambassador's right. body. Uh, but while we're talking about that, another contact comes off. This time the double agent is in our conversation, which means we do get credit for the contact double agent mission. You can see it there in the upper left. So when we triggered bug the ambassador, our arm extended out in a way that an AI would never do. Only a spy will do that particular kind of animation. And this doesn't matter. The shot comes off onto General. Lev Trotsky thinking that General might be finishing his third mission and shoots him for it. Yeah, we've seen a lot of civilian shots here in the set so far. Um, both spies being very, very frame targeted. And you can see with Thabzies, having only one mission done with 20 seconds left, was really relying on that frame to happen yet again, which has really kind of been his game plan for much of the set. All right, and this is something you can definitely see. Uh, you can see a lot in this game. There's two ways to win as a spy. They're both perfectly valid, either finishing missions or getting someone else shot. Thabsies with this causing the sieve shot onto general now is down only by one game, two to three, as we go into our second game of Terrace. Yep. And as before, as always, the players switch sides. So Lev is now 
going to be spying here as the character we call Salmon. All right, we'll get into this game in three, two, one, playing it. And Alev is uh, going to take control and just walk over to the window. Uh, it's very common to wait to see where characters go uh, as they all settle at the beginning of the game and then chase your seduction target somewhere. But we probably won't be doing that as it's very suspicious to chase a seduction target that's so close to you. It just stands out in the sniper's mind. So instead, we join this conversation. We can't make any mission progress here. Lev's going to have to wait a little bit longer. I think now is a good time. You'll notice that the ambassador has put down a briefcase there. So one of the missions available is called Fingerprint the Ambassador, and that requires going to things that the ambassador has touched or left behind, such as the briefcase, such as statues, books, drinks, and touching it immediately after the ambassador and getting, picking up their fingerprint off of it. And it's a mission that's another one of those soft tells that leaves no trace behind. Lev Trotsky is going to uh, just walk away here. We weren't able to make any progress in that conversation. Uh, we did see that this character, who we call Rocker, picked up the briefcase. So Rocker could have gotten a fingerprint off of that briefcase. Uh, but since Rocker is the double agent, both the spy and the sniper know that this cannot be the spy. Lev is going into the bar now um, and picking up a drink. You'll notice that Lev has delegated. You can see the mission sort of on the center, the bottom center of the screen. And that means that Lev has the ability to take walk into a conversation circle next to somebody and tell them to go take the list and finish the purloin mission for him. We go to conversation here. Unfortunately, our seduction target, who's Irish, has really not been cooperating. We have really not had much of a chance to do any flirting at all. And so, so far, Lev has absolutely zero mission progress. We don't have any progress on Seduce the Target. We haven't been to statues. We haven't bugged the ambassador. We haven't touched anything to get fingerprints. And at this point, with time so low, Lev might also have to start thinking about, is there anyone else at this party who's suspicious that I could get shot? And step one for doing that is what Lev is doing right now, and that's doing a fake banana bread. Unfortunately, the double agent leaves the other one as well, so nobody's going to get credit for the real one. The sniper knows that nobody just finished that mission. Minute 13 on the clock, uh, and time is really starting to become a problem for Lev Trotsky, our seduction target is not cooperating. We haven't been to statues. Uh, and unless we do something pretty drastic pretty soon, we're going to have a really hard time finishing off three missions. It's very important to make steady progress on your missions throughout the game. Um, and we just tried to flirt <laughs> with our seduction target. But in that little mini game that Sped Monkey talked about, we got the worst result, which caused her to just leave and walk away. And more importantly, gave us no progress towards our our flirt meter, towards getting her seduced. So with time taken down to 30 seconds now, with still zero mission progress complete, we're finally going to fire off the real banana, banana bread here bread. with the double agent in our conversation circle. And with only one character out, which the sniper knows cannot be the spy, that's the twin over there who's at the window pad, um, there's still not a shot coming off here though, which is not what Lev wants to see. Lev is hoping that somebody else will get shot in this situation. 12 seconds now, you can see Lev in desperation runs past the ambassador and starts dancing around. Um, we're going to break down what happened here kind of step by step. So 20 seconds left. Lev knows it's going to be very difficult to finish two missions. Lev decides I'm going to go bug the ambassador. So we walk by the ambassador and we do that arm extension animation that I talked about. We leave conversation right here and there's that arm kind of touching the ambassador's body, the sniper probably saw that arm extension. And when the sniper sees it, the sniper knows that Salmon is the spy. Lev then starts what we call dancing, uh, just kind of walking back and forth behind other characters, hoping that Thabsis makes a missed shot and shoots one of the other characters by mistake. But Thabsis, uh, it doesn't happen, is able to take the shot accurately. And that means Thabsis picks up the sniper win and takes the set even 3-3. Three to three. I think it's worth noting as well that snipers can not can only shoot a character. You can't shoot and just miss everybody what's all together. You can't fire off a bullet you know, into that very nice lantern behind the bar. Um, it can only be a character. So you know, the sniper can only fire off the bullet if the laser is actually on a character, which helps a lot for the sniper in situations like this especially. All right, well, we go to our fourth venue. It will be the venue called Modern. And Thabsi's playing Boots, uh, so named 
because she's wearing boots. You can see them We're very original sometimes down there. And we will get into this our seventh game in three, two, one, playing it. Yep, and at this point, this set is tied up. Both these players have won three games, so it's all even going into the remainder of the set. Reminder, we're playing to seven. Thabsies joins conversation with our seduction target. Uh, we're able to make some progress on seduce the target. And you can see, looking at Modern here, uh, it's a pretty big venue, lots of open space, which means that Thabsies, who has had trouble finishing missions in some of the earlier games, is going to have to make sure that they make steady progress if they want to be able to get all four missions done that are needed for victory. Uh, anytime you're looking to see how many missions do I need, you can always look at the upper left and you can see that Thabsis has to finish any four of these eight missions. Yep, and all eight missions that are currently in the game are available. The developer of the game, Checker, has said that more missions will be coming in the future, but as of right now, these are the only ones that you can do in any version of the game right now. Tabsies, meanwhile, firing off a fake banana bread and leaving immediately, trying to earn that highlight, uh, hoping that Lev would think that he is out of conversation at the moment. Um, we call that a banana split in the community because you fire off a banana bread and then split immediately from the conversation circle. Um, and meanwhile, we're going to just take the list directly. Instead of delegating, we're doing a direct purloin. Yeah, and if you're looking here... At Lev's sniper view, you can see Lev is low lighting so many people. Everyone who hasn't been to bar uh, is going to be a low light because Lev knows that now that the list has disappeared, it has to have been either us who took it or someone else who's been to bar that triggered for us to go and take the list. Either way, that means we have one mission done. We're staying next to our seduction targets. We've made more progress on seduce the target. And we have two minutes and 23 seconds to finish three more missions. It's worth noting as well that we picked up one of those fingerprints that we had talked about earlier. So, in theory, Thabsies has an avenue to win here um, with only soft tails remaining. And if we can get one more fingerprint, finish our flirt, and get a real banana bread, a real contactable agent, then Thabsies can finish his mission still without having to do another hard tell, making it more obvious that he is the spy. Two minutes left to play in this game. Thabsies still has to track down the double agent and save banana bread. Still has to flirt with our seduction target one more time. And then um, maybe get one more fingerprint is probably what we're going to try to do. You can see Thabsies looking at our seduction target, walking by, walking straight on by, which is unfortunate for us. We would have to go chase her if we want to finish seduce the target. And I would assume that's the plan. But maybe the double agent will come to us. No, we decide to just leave immediately and finish off that flirt mission. And we're going to go sort of away from the seduction target um, because we don't need that much more on our flirt mission to finish. So we're going to go across the conversation circle from her. But she leaves on us, unfortunately, not letting us get that mission done. And time is ticking down. This is a problem because we have to get that mission done and she is just not having any of it. So we're going to go for the briefcase instead and hopefully to pick up the fingerprint off of it. This briefcase... Uh, does have a possible print. We have to win one of those little action test mini games to get the print off the briefcase. So it's all going to come down to this. And Thabsies does it. Thabsies gets the so-called green test, uh, wins the little mini game, and gets the fingerprint. You can see fingerprint is now complete. So we still need to find our selection target and flirt once. And the double agent is going to need to come into some conversation so we can say banana bread. We chase down the seduction target. This is fine for our flirt. We flirt immediately, not giving the suction target a chance to walk away. 24 seconds now. We just need to find the double agent and get them into a conversation and save banana bread. They're coming this way. They're coming this way. They might join conversation. And they do. And Thabsies is going to love that. We say banana bread immediately. Banana bread. It comes off just at 10 seconds. And now Lev has to shoot us or we're going to win because we completed all our missions. And Lev clearly wants to but doesn't end up taking the shot. Thabsies survives 10 seconds after finishing the last mission, and that means Thabsies wins as spy. Yeah, getting missions done is sort of the classic way of winning on the spy side, and I think this is the first game in the set where we've actually seen that happen. <laughs> I think it actually is. Uh, so right back here, as the double agent joins, you can see that right about when the clock hits 10 seconds, we say banana bread. Banana bread. 
that means that there's not really going to be any overtime, maybe like a third of a second of overtime. Um, and so Lev is going to have to shoot before the clock hits zero. But Lev doesn't know if we're actually finished with missions or not, not aware that we have all those fingerprints and is unwilling to chance the shot onto Thabsies. And that means Thabsies wins for finishing all four missions. And the sniper, of course, has the incentive to not shoot, because as we've seen, if the spy, if the time ticks out and the spy is not done, then the spy loses and the sniper wins. So Lev is gambling that the spy is not done um, and is willing to let the time expire, hoping that he'll pick up the win there. But unfortunately, he just doesn't know that Thabsies had gotten those fingerprints and finished off those missions there at the very end. So Thabsies, uh, for the first time now, is ahead in the set 4-3. to three, And Lev is now going to play from behind this time on the spy side, playing as the character that we call Alice on a modern. Four missions to do in three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, a lot of these characters have different names. Some people call this character Alice um, due to some sort of obscure <laughs> in-jokes in the community almost. Others call her Ponytail for her very distinctive ponytail, of course. And a lot of these characters have multiple names. For example, the cowboy there, the gentleman in the cowboy hat. Some call him Carlos, some call him Cowboy. Um, and you'll hear all of these names as you stick around the community and watch more casts. So right now, Lev Trotsky is waiting in line at the bar, and the ambassador comes right to us. And we're able to bug the ambassador making that little animation that I talked about. And that means that since the sniper didn't see us sticking our arm out, it's so hard to see when there's such a crowded bar that we've finished Bug the Ambassador and we haven't, it looks like, earned any suspicion for it. No, you can see the highlights right now coming out from Thabsies. And it's all the people who have been at bar. Thabsies trying to desperately keep track of who could have been at bar in case a delegate purloin comes off. But I don't think Thabsies is aware that Lev has already gotten that bug completed. And with that one hard tell done, without any real suspicion, that's such a big bonus for a spy. It opens up so much to the game here for Lev's decision making. And we're going to go try and finish up this flirt. We had gotten 51% at the bar before. We step in next to the queen and get another flirt, a white test, for 85% now and immediately walk away. Lev is playing very aggressively here on Spy. Yeah, there's lots of different ways to play this game. Uh, we've seen a lot of slow play, especially from Thabsies. Lev is playing very quickly. We're going to go right back to conversation with our seduction target and the double agent. We're going to save banana bread. But no! Thabsies finds the shot onto us somehow figures out that we're the spy and shoots us with two and a half minutes left in the game and us having finished only one mission. Yeah, the banana bread didn't even come off. We had just walked in and talked. And clearly, I think it's pretty clear that Thabsies was more on top of that bug than maybe we suspected. Um, we can talk more about animations later, maybe in the next set. But you can see that from the arm is very visible sticking out from the camera sniper or from the spy point of view. But from the, spy, the sniper point of view, you can see the arm sticking out and then snap back in. And perhaps he's not letting on that he is aware that Lev has just bugged the ambassador there. So Thabsies now up five to three. And uh, just needs two more wins to win the set. Yeah, really good play from Thabsies here. Coming back from down 2-0 to start things off. It is now up by really a full venue. We're going from Modern, again, one of the bigger venues, into Pub, which is smaller. And one of the notable things about Pub here is that, as I had mentioned before, you only need to inspect one statue to get that mission done here, which is sort of the unique aspect of this venue. All right, well, Thabsies playing as the character that we call Rocker in three, two, one, playing it. Other names for her are Sybil or Leopard. We're just going to wait here at Windows. Uh, again, you see this quite a bit. You just want to wait and see what the rest of the party does before you decide what you want to do. We're walking by the Ambassador. We could have tried to bug the Ambassador there, but the Ambassador leaves, which means we're not able to plant a bug since he's walking away. We follow the Ambassador all the way into this back conversation, but we stand far away from him, so we can't bug him from here. And so Thabsies, for now, is just going to stand here and uh, not make any mission progress, but we'll watch the rest of the party to figure out who might be suspicious. Yeah, worth noting that Bug has a very limited range on it. You have to be really snuggled up next to the ambassador, whether you're walking or standing, um, in order for that bug to really reach, for that arm to reach out and really land that bug. 
And across a conversation circle will not do it. Generally, the circles kind of around your legs and around the ambassador's legs have to be touching or close to it in order for that bug to land. Well, 2 minutes 43, and we're seeing more slow play out of Thabsis. The ambassador is coming our way, but is, again, not really close enough for us to bug just standing here in conversation. The circles are not close enough at our feet. So uh, Thabsis uh, really not making any mission progress at all. Thabsis could be setting up for yet another frame attempt. Yeah, we've seen this a whole lot from Thabsis in this set. Um, Thabsis clearly preferring to play the sort of slower frame-based game. And to his credit, it's been working out for him pretty well. Um, as you had said last time, spies have a bunch of different options available to them as far as how they want to play the game. The ambassador comes back to us a third time, and this time the ambassador would be close enough for us to bug if we want to, but you can see Lev is staring down this bug, not willing to let it happen, and the ambassador walks away without us taking it. Yeah, when you're playing as the spy, you can see that laser going around, and you can kind of tell what the sniper is looking at. And when you're staying next to the ambassador with that laser just drilling onto you, you know you can't survive that bug. Instead, we're going to come join conversation with our seduction target. If we talk here, we can finally make some mission progress. Um, but Thabsi is, there it is, will finally flirt. So we have seduced the target about half done. And with a minute 30 left on the clock, uh, we're going to need to make a lot more mission progress if we plan to actually finish three missions. Excuse me, four missions. But again... You can see these highlights coming out for people who have been to statues. And that's such a big suspicion marker for who Lev is looking at. And Thabsis has to be aware of that. Thabsis is probably looking at these people with the highlights and thinking, which of them is the most suspicious and which one can I frame? For example, we have Orin Sari going into the far conversation circle with the double agent. And Thabsis is going to fake way. right now to try and get her credit for having the mission done and potentially get her shot. You can see Lev Trotsky is lowlighting people that were out of conversation. Lev is also surely noticing which conversations have that yellow triangle, which means they could have actually contacted the double agent. There's no double agent in our conversation, so we didn't get credit for that mission, even though we said banana bread out loud. Thabsis will now go to the statue. We can pick up the statue and inspect it to finish one of our missions. Uh, we've been highlighted by Lev for going to a statue. After we finish this, we're going to swap the statue, and Lev sees it immediately, immediately shoots us. Yeah, the swap is really, really visible, especially there in the front window. And Lev, seeing the fade, seeing it switch from the bird statue into the head, is just completely aware that Thabsis has to be the spy and takes the shot immediately. Um, question from chat, by the way, how do we tell the twins apart? One twin is wearing jewelry that includes a tie pin, an earring, and I think a ring, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, and we call that bling twin. The other one without that jewelry is plain twin. Um, a lot of players will highlight one or the other, the one that they find more suspicious and differentiate them that way on the sniper side. Uh, but technically, Bling Twin and Plain Twin are sort of the community names for the two characters. All right, well, that was our first game of pub. We're going to move on to our second. And speaking of twins, Lev Trotsky is playing as Bling Twin. You can see that tie clip on the tie that gives it away. Thabsi's on the sniper side, and the game is still close in three, two, one, playing it. Lev Trotsky yeah, started way out in the venue, so we're going to start by walking all the way over here, going inside the bar, trying to find some mission progress, uh, and it looks like it's going to be just bailing out and standing at windows, as unfortunately our seduction target, who was inside, ended up walking outside. Yep. The bar, the pub is an interesting venue because of the sort of the long interior and the long spacious exterior as well. It gives the spy... Interesting rooms to play with, interesting sight lines for the sniper. Lev is going to go into this conversation circle across from the seduction target and red test the flirt, making the seduction target leave immediately and go to the bar. Now, the sniper, the, or the spy, excuse me, can do that intentionally. A lot, of, a lot of spies won't do that, but if you have a particular gambit in mind, such as hopefully forcing your seduction target to go do suspicious things, like get a drink, then that's an option. So let's see what Lev has in mind here with this game. The seduction target comes right back to us. We're going to let off a contact, a banana bread, as the double agent is in conversation with us and with our seduction target. And so that means that in the sniper's mind, we could have completed contact the double agent, but small man, who's our seduction target, could also have completed contact the double agent. And small man has just been to bar. And you can see, because of the real banana bread 
Fabsies is going around highlighting the people who had credit for the real banana bread there. That's us in this conversation circle, and then the people in the other one that also had the suspected double agent in it right now. So you can see this group of characters who are all kind of glowing right now, because Fabsies know that all of these characters with that are highlighted right now could potentially have the real mi contact mission done. Two minutes left on the clock. Uh, we're still sitting in conversation with our seduction targets, so we can keep trying to flirt here. Uh, Lev Trotsky does have contact with the double agent done, uh, can make some progress on seduce the target, and still going to have to find one more mission. Uh, we could go try to inspect a statue, we could go try to take the guest list. The problem is that since we're high lit, and this, that probably means the sniper thinks we're more suspicious, it's likely that we'll get shot if we do anything too obvious. Uh, worth pointing out, by the way, the spy can't see who's high lit or low lit. We can see it as spectators, but the spy doesn't know if they're high lit, low lit, or just neutral lit. Yep, that's definitely true. And that also is a skill that a lot of spies kind of learn with experience, which is kind of reading that laser and trying to determine how suspicious the sniper thinks you are, whether you've been high lit, low lit, neutral lit, or whatever else. You, for example, you can see the sniper zooming in carefully on General here at the back statue, making sure that General is not swapping as General goes for a briefcase instead. Clearly, General is very suspicious right now, uh, doing a lot of things that are fairly spy-like. Yeah, and you can see Thabsies rotates the laser over to watch General very carefully. But we say banana bread as General is out of conversation. That means that General immediately is low-lit because Thabsies knows that it can't possibly be General. We red flirt our seduction target. Again, another red test on the action test that makes our seduction target leave conversation and walk away. We're hoping our seduction target will do something suspicious. 33 seconds left. We're going to join, excuse me, leave conversation, go over to bar. Our seduction target's at bar being offered a drink. Um... But I have to imagine at this point with 23 seconds left, it's going to be very difficult for Lev to pull out a win on this game. Yeah, at this point, unless we go add time, which we can do as we saw, Lev is really just relying on somebody else to get shot. Lev is probably going to take this list right now and just hope that the shot comes off, that Thabsies think that somebody else sent Lev to take this list here. But with time ticking down, even with this list gone, no overtime would be coming off, or overtime would be coming off if the spy really uh, were involved in this game. And with no overtime coming, the time just runs out and Thabsies picks up the sniper win and is on the cusp of taking this set altogether. You can see that we tried to add time at the last, last second here. Uh, with 1.6 seconds left, we triggered a watch check um, to try to add time to the clock. But it takes some time to actually check your watch, and it's just not quite enough time. So time runs out before Lev is able to add time to the clock. Time runs out before we've completed our missions. No shot came off, and that means Thabsie wins the sniper game. Um, and as you mentioned, now on match point, to even get a draw, uh, Lev is going to have to win the next two games. And those, of course, are on our newest venue, which is Redwoods. Uh, not, <laughs> not a beginner-friendly map, uh, to put it plainly. You can see from the sniper view here, once the map loads, um, there's a lot of trees blocking it. And it's kind of unique in that the sniper has to kind of dodge their sight around the trees and just get a look at what the spy is doing. But we will start off with our camera looking at what the spy sees. It will be Thabsies playing as Orange Sari uh, on match point in 3, 2, 1, playing it. So like the other venues that we've been seeing, this one has all eight missions available and Thabsies has to finish four. That's sort of, I think, the most common venue set up here in the spy party competitive scene. Um, obviously, there's a lot of customization available. And we go for the bug here, standing in a conversation circle, and we get it. With our, the view blocked from the trees, I think we've gotten away with that pretty cleanly. It's so difficult when you're sniping on redwoods. You have to be rotating around trying to see everything at once. And if there's just a little tree in your way, you can also see we're kind of standing behind General here. It can be very difficult for the sniper to see that you bug the ambassador. That's one mission done for Thabsies. Two minutes 45 on the clock. And that might be the fastest we've seen Thabsies finish a mission so far in this set. Yeah, Thabsies is really running around here, which we haven't seen at all so far from him. We're going for an inspect now as well. Thabsies has the option of swapping here, of course, as he holds the statue. But it looks like he's just going to inspect and then put it back down. I'm checking off one of the three inspects needed here to finish that mission. After looking at that one inspect, we still don't have uh, flirt done, seduce the target. We often call it just flirt. So we'll join conversation with our seduction target. We'll flirt with them one more time here as we talk and that will finish 
seduce the target. We've got the green test, that green little uh, timing mini game. We got the best result twice. That's enough to finish the mission. Our second check mark in the upper left. We need two more. And Thapsies is racing here. We're going to go over to this bookshelf. Uh, when you're standing here at this middle bookshelf with statues on either side, you can inspect those statues while you're holding a book. Uh, that will let us finish inspect, and you can see Lev has highlighted us, presumably for being done with statue inspects. So Lev knows that we're a little bit of a threat, but if Lev doesn't know that we got that bug, it's going to be very, very difficult for Lev to shoot us. We're moving to conversation with the double agent. This is the last mission we need to win this match. But we don't take the contact right away. We're going to let a little bit of time bear down. We don't want to be too, too suspicious here from Thapsies. And the double agent leaves us, unfortunately. Not letting us get that mission done right now. But we have so much time to find one more mission. We could even go for a different one entirely, not the banana bread, um, and do what we call a silent game. And that's finishing all your missions without firing off the banana bread, um, not giving off any sound cues to the sniper. But the double agent comes back to us, and I assume Thabzies yeah, will fire off the banana bread right here. Yep, there it is. And now Lev has 10 seconds to shoot. It looks like Lev doesn't know that we're finishing, and as a result, can't take a shot onto us, not aware that we had that bug. And that means Thabzies wins by accomplishing four missions and surviving for 10 seconds. Thabzies earns his seventh point, and Thabzies wins 